Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to Satisfactory 1.0. In the last episode, we got our coal power plant all figured out, so now we have a delicious 900 megawatts of power. And what I'd like to do to start this episode is get Caterium um, to the base. And it is close enough. I think I'm just gonna belt it. How close actually is it? It's down here. Um, yeah, it's only 570 meters. So I think we're just gonna do a, a Mark III belt and we're gonna get that brought over. Um, I figured that's not the most riveting gameplay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording and we'll get that set up real quick. All right, and we are back. We've got our Caterium. In fact, can you see it? No, that's just powerful. Caterium miners way out there. And we got our Mark III belt. Rip roaring, and we overclocked it on a pure node, so we should get a full uh, 270 Caterium a minute, which is awesome. And so we're gonna get quick wire going, and then obviously with that we can um, make the tier two power poles wherever we want, so I'll probably make those my default. Uh, we should get rid of all of these things, since we now have the ability to. Let's make a nice little explosion party. So we don't have to worry about poison in our base anymore. Uh, is that all of them? Is there one on top? I don't think I got that one. One up there. Alright, let's try this. Oh, I missed that one. Missed it again. <laughs> Get out of here. Come on. Nope. A little higher. A little closer. And too far. Come on. Oh. Gotta. So close. I wonder if I throw it while I'm traveling up. Oh yeah, that completely changes the trajectory. Okay, that's part of the problem. Physics. All right, you know what? I'll just do it the easy way. You guys walk away from explosions. Okay, I think that is all the poison gas taken. What? That? All the poison gas taken care of. Yeah, the parachute up a hill thing is pretty, pretty ridiculous. Um, they need to make it so it uh, takes you out of parachute mode when your legs hit the ground more often. Like, you can hit a slope that's like only 10 degrees up and you'll like slide up the hill instead of just landing. It's really weird. Anyway, uh, I would like to build another platform. I think I wanna switch to being global gridified though. Uh, so that platform is gonna stay separate. And we're gonna go I don't know. I guess I'll just start here. And I'm gonna go above this rock. Probably three notches. And then... The top. And then a foundation. Is that high enough? I think that's high enough. Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay. So we'll zoop. Zoop to whoop. Make sure. Ooh, it's actually pretty close, but it's just perfect. Um, it kind of looks like it'll support the factory even. I think I'll do an 11 by 11 here. Let's see. That's 
seven, so that's eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, perfect. Now if I zoop out ten, is it going to overlap that last one? I bet it is. Yep, that's annoying. Okay, so I need to zoop out nine. Instead of ten. What might be easier, to be honest, is deconstruct those and then just do the full 10. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be easier. Oh yeah, this is the stuff. <laughs> Look at all that concrete. Nice. It's beautiful. All right, and then we'll get the supports going. <laughs> Your bit rates? You don't need a bit rate. What even is a bit rate? Just a lie that that uh, big YouTube is trying to sell you. All right, get another support on this corner. Sweet. And I think. Maybe we're not gonna have to move anything, clipping wise. Hmm. So this is where I'm like, should I go one tile higher, put the support, and then put a foundation under the support? Does that look better or worse? I think that looks better to see the foot, rather than like basically none of the foot. It would be helpful if they had half pillars, uh, just like two meter tall rather than four meter tall, but you know, I won't complain too much. Okay, and I think that's all we need to do. Um, I'll deconstruct this because that's where we'll use the Caterium. This will be our first Caterium factory up here. Code Cone, I'm sure there's a way to do it as well. I could just, like if I wanted a two meter, I would probably just build a foundation. I'll just do it like this. I would do a two meter foundation and then I can do a pillar underneath that, like, like so. And then I can do a pillar on top of that one and now we have our two meter pillars. But then you have the Z fighting which is very obnoxious. Okay, and then... I think I like... It's, it's so weird. I wish when you went to build a power line, it would do the same thing that it does when you connect a power line. When you connect a power line, it auto... Um, oh, weird. If you switch back to going to power line, it doesn't connect. But like when you build from a power line, it does connect to be a wall-mounted doodad. That's super interesting. Um, yeah. So we'll pop back up here, and then now... Oh wait, that's... I, I need the small metal pillar, not the big one. Forget, do I need to build two of these or just one of these? I think I've been building two. So maybe I do want the wall mounted... Um, wall outlet. How do I get wall outlet mark two? Is that a, do I buy that in the shop probably? Yeah, there's a nice easy way to get up. 
to the factory. And then this will be... Caterium factory. I need to get rid of this tree. And the other thing is I will... Ex this factory will be extensible. It'll go that way. And potentially that way as well. For now, the size is, is uh, enough, I think. But let's get rid of this tree real quick. Goodbye. And then we'll do all this foliage. Weird. I was in area mode. But it wasn't acting like it. I wonder if it's because I have too much stuff in my inventory. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All the trees are gone. Beautiful. And then... Maybe I should just use jump pads. How how much power do they use? Five megawatt. Do they only use five megawatts when they launch me? Or is it just a constant draw? Um, Cause if it's a constant draw, that, that feels kind of... Seems like... can't really tell. Here. The way to test... is to build... a bunch of them. And then we hook them all up. Oops. Science! Science, 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 and more science. Okay, so then... Put that one up there. Okay, so we should be able to see a large spike in the consumption when I hook it up. There was not. Well, maybe there was. The wiki says it charges. Oh, okay. Interesting. For how long, I wonder. Here. New plan. Biomass burner. You give me the better numbers. Okay, we're gonna have to wait for that to clear out. Because the graph is way too tall. It does say consumption of zero watts. Or zero megawatts, which is also zero watts. Zero in any amount of units is zero. Um... But max consumption is 40, and when I go on one, it uh, didn't make any consumption. Seems like they're not using any power. I don't even have power in the biomass burner, that's why. Okay, so what's going on here? So there's our actual usage, is the black line. So they do consume a little bit. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm consuming 0.8 megawatts. So they consume 100 kilowatts uh, constantly. And then when you launch, it consumes five megawatts for like five seconds. Four seconds, it looks like. Um, and that's it. 
4.4 seconds. Okay, there you go. That's what the wiki says. So we scienced it. We got our answer. Lines up with what the wiki says. All I basically wanted to know is if they are um, drawing five megawatts for like most of the time, and they are not. So I actually feel better about jump pads now because before I actually thought that they drew that power constantly, which is not the case. Not enough space to pick up leaves. Oh my goodness. Don't forget to have a fix-it protein bar. Ooh, tasty. All right, so then jump pads, at least for the lower, um, the lower things like this, I actually will jump pad it up. And then probably want to just clear it like that. I think. Man. Yay. Okay, yeah, that's nice. That's a lot faster. Um, and then I can jump pad over to the other, the other factory. Oh, no, I can't. It doesn't quite make it. I need to power it up. Can you overclock a jump pad? No. <laughs> um, we would need a, a little jump. The jump pad would need to send me into another jump pad. Here, I can put one on here. This might go far enough. Yes, it does. Um... There we go. Maybe? Oh, I need to hook this up. No. No, not there. <gasps> nope, didn't make it. Um, let's see. Put one down here. Oh man, we we jump padding everywhere now. This is this is how we do things. No. I need a lock hologram. Oh, weird. You can't rotate it after you've locked it. Um, so you kind of have to get the angle right. Can you still nudge it? No, you can't nudge it anymore either. Once you're configuring... I feel like... Yeah, you gotta clear it a little bit more. Like that one. Yeah, they don't get a lot of love because of the jetpack. That is certainly true. Yeah, that didn't even make it. They are cool, though. Which is why I'm building them right now. Yeah, that one should do it. Whee! There we go. This one I can just... Parachute over. That's the other thing. There's already like Blade Runners and and the uh, the little you can launch yourself on belts pretty far. So with all of that going, it is kind of hard to hard to justify a little bit. You know what I could do is the blueprint thing. Um, we could try a blueprint. Let's let's do a smelting blueprint. Yeah, a belt bridge is going to be way faster to hop on. So there's a there's a lot of options, and most of them are better than jump platforms. Ooh, ooh, solid steel ingot. That's a good one. Uh, that is a good one. 
Oh, but steel screws is so good too. I want both. Um, steel is such a big deal though. I mean, you get 50% more steel for the same amount of materials. You just have to smelt the iron first. And it's a little faster to, uh, to boot. You know, like it's 60 a minute instead of the normal 45 a minute, which helps pay a little bit for the, the smelting of iron that you have to do. So very much, very much solid steel ingot. It is a bit sad because I want steel screws too. Yeah, Code Cone, um, there's a little bit of both for me with screws. I, I think there's a lot of recipes where I actually prefer to avoid screws entirely, but there are some where screws are actually quite good. So sometimes I like to go both both routes. Um, berries, mycelia, or no, mycelia doesn't go here. That goes here. And anything else? And get rid of the the wood here. The leaves here. Okay, so let's finish this blueprint. I need to pull that stuff out of my dimensional depot. Concrete was uh, pretty slowly recovering after I built 121 foundations. So let me go grab some more. Grab some more. You know, maybe someday I should remove these, but it's hard to remove things when they're working perfectly. <laughs> you know, I, ha I have all the iron plates and rods I need. Why well, remove it? Here we go. Off it goes. Milestone reached. Blueprints reduce repetitive building tasks. Further optimizing your progression towards saving Earth, with its beautiful ecosystems, abundant natural resources, and sunsets over frolicky puppies and kittens. The blueprint kittens. designer allows you to build and combine structures once and then duplicate that configuration effortlessly. Any complaints about the spatial restrictions will only reveal your own inefficiencies. I have no inefficiencies, Ada. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know of what you speak. All right, so this thing is a big boy. Not big enough for many people, but. Once you have built a satisfactory blueprint, interact with the blueprint designer terminal to save it. It will then be available in the blueprints tab of your build menu. Blueprints can always be edited to correct mistakes or optimize. If you find yourself struggling to work within the set size restrictions, remember that this is a you problem, and efficiency can always be improved. Remember that this is a you problem. <laughs> Rude. Okay, so this is going to be great. We're going to set up a smelting blueprint first, because that's something we use a lot. So, I think I'll just go with a four smelter build. And we'll do splitters. I probably will feed things from the side because then I can line these up next to each other. If I feed it from the back, then it'll be weird when I put them next to each other. I'll probably do it like that. And as much as I would like to skimp on belts, I think it's just better to build it with the highest marker point you can. Not really a convincing reason to save a few steel beams here. And then I can do the mergers. Uh, I'll merge back, so we'll go left to right for input and right to left for output. Ooh, I'm excited. This is awesome. Uh, yeah. I think they would be too mushed into the building. That. 
I mean, it's off-center, but yeah, I think that's a little too... A little too smushed. Though, technically, I would be more efficient if I did it that way. Alright. Mark three. Okay. Yeah, and that makes this very easily tileable, because I can just... All I have to do is connect those two to each other, and then we'll do power poles. Um, mark two. Because I can just power everything up with one power pole. I do it that way. Maybe right here? Alright. There's my blueprint. And that's gonna save me so much time whenever I set up smelters. So now we do this, blueprint name, set directory. Um, wait, no. How do I make a directory? Add category. Aha. Category name. Smelting. Select icon. Um, there's not actually a, a great selection of icons here. These are mostly icons you would put, like, shown on the factory. Um, okay. So smelting... is now there. Okay, so now we can do set directory smelting. Wait, what? I don't know. Smelters X4. Blueprint description, I don't need. Icon, now we've got icons. Now we're talking. Okay, save, and now we can go over here, and that's not where we want it to be. Okay. You can also drag a blueprint here, but how? I can't click and drag that. Hmm. Oh, edit? There we go. <laughs> but what? It didn't make a subcategory. Edit, drag, drag. You can also drag a blueprint here. I think it's lying to automatically create a new subcategory. That ain't working. I'll just make one myself. Um, I'll call it uh, phase one. Uh, oh God. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, edit, drag. Still isn't seeming, there we go. I don't believe it about making a new subcategory. If there's a way to do that, it's not just drag it over there. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Phase one, we got our smelters X4. And I will just go ahead and plop that down. And this is where being able to nudge is super handy. Um... Oh, there is a max nudging distance. Good to know. Okay. So get it close to where we want it. Which rotation are we doing? I forget which end of the smelter is the back. Uh, those are the splitters, so this is this is the way we want it. Um, there's also a white arrow? Apparently. 
So I have the whole thing facing backwards. So that's maybe something I need to pay attention to in the future. But yeah, we'll put it there. Nudge it over a little bit. Yeah, maybe we'll have a one foundation uh, kind of border here. Click. Our first Building blueprint. in blueprint mode can further optimize your construction process with snapping and quick dismantling options. Build modes are not just there to make your work easier, they compensate for inevitable human error. Human error. Fix it understands humanity like no that. other, and humanity needs you to be efficient and productive at all times. Alright, there's our screenshot for the episode. Um, so when she's talking about snapping. So I know I can... What are the build modes? Blueprint and default? What's different? Oh, blueprint mode... I don't totally understand what it's doing. Like, obviously it's snapping one blueprint next to the other. Is that... I'm not entirely clear. Um, as far as deconstruction, <laughs> excuse me, I know that we can dismantle the whole blueprint together, which is super cool, too. So that's a thing. All right, let's get our wall, conveyor wall. Um, we said we have to feed in from the side. So, yeah, we'll just put that right there. Let's see. And then... Just bring that over. Dinner has been consumed. Phone call is made. Satisfactory is updated. What haven't you done, Dave? Sounds like you've been extremely productive, but fix it does not appreciate that you've been productive for non-fix it things. So you need to you need to get uh, get on that. All right, I forgot to reverse this, so there we go. All right, straight is not gonna do much for me there. All right, and is there still no caterium on here? I don't see ore. Is that just because the walls are too tall? Yes. Perfect. Perfection. All right, so then we've got that. Bring that over here. And yeah, now we just select those. I do wish uh, pasting could be done from a distance, like pasting settings. Like, I wish I could just copy and paste settings from here. Um, you know, like, I can middle click to copy the building, but to paste the settings, you have to be in, like, configuration range. And that makes it a little bit of a pain to, like, paste settings on a bunch of buildings. Small complaint. Small complaint. Uh, sweet. So this is our first blueprint, and I believe we have everything we need. I do need a power, but I don't really like where this is. This is hanging off the edge. Um, I'll have to move that, but. We get our walls built. Put up the power lines. Mm. Maybe I'll connect down there. For now. So 
here's our quick wire. And these bad boys are 45 to 15 a minute instead of the 30 30 that we normally see. So this is going to be a 180 or per minute to make 60 um, doodads, whatever they're called. And uh, now let's do a new blueprint. Where's that thing? Special. Um, here, let me nudge it into a proper position. This thing is so big. Uh, there we go. Oh, and that's on the wrong side now. No, no, no. There we go. Good. Yeah, that's good. Not enter. Click. It's funny because my, my fingers are using the arrow keys to do the nudging, and then my brain says in, hit the enter key to confirm, you know, because I'm using the arrow keys. Okay, so I did my smelters. Now I want to do the same thing with constructors, basically. And last time I had the smelters going that way and the arrow was the wrong direction. So I think I want to have it going this way this time. And then that will actually line up with like the process. Constructors are interesting. I feel like you don't often need four of them. Um, like often you only want two, so I might do these in pairs. I could always have two different blueprints because I could see myself if I do a four, a constructors four X, constructors X four, I'm gonna end up deleting one or two of them a lot of the time. So I think I'll start with just a two, a two fur, and we'll see how that goes. What's up, H's YouTube? Welcome back. So yeah, I'll just start with a two fur. Even this will save me a lot of time, not having to a couple belts and the power poles every single time. Merger. So, okay, that's all we need, and then a power pole, mark two, Pick those up, and that will be, is that clipping? That is clipping, that's fine. won't clip if I put it there. I also like that because then I can jump in between the buildings a little easier. Uh, no, that's actually still clipping. It needs to be... Closer to the belt, I guess. Yeah. Technically not clipping, I think. Yes, technically. All right, so that is our Constructors X2. And then directory, um, I don't know. We need to rename this category as Production. Can I delete a subcategory? Hmm. I don't know. You might not be able to. Undefined might be a fixed, fixed thing. Uh, 
Um, oh, I need an icon for that. I don't understand what set director... You can't select anything here. So I don't really understand. What is this button doing? Directory undefined slash production. But how do you set a new directory? Because if I... Hmm. But you don't actually seem to be able to set it. Because this one is already saved. Like, it's already in there. Wait, no, it's not. What? Okay, that's weird. So... So, when you set directory... Oh, uh, okay. You then click where you want it to end up. But then you X out of this. Yeah, it's, it's a little, it's a little janky, I'd say, but I think I'm starting to get it. It's not intuitive, at least. Um, and then you save it, and now that whole process is done. Okay. Now I can do my constructors X2. The arrow is actually pointing the right way. Is the arrow pointing the right way? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. And then we can... If things come out the left. Go in the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is all right. So then I can... I wish we could nudge further. The nudge distance is actually pretty small at the end of the day. It's, it's not even, like, too full... Um whatchamacallits, foundations. So I can get real up close and personal like this. Connect that over to the wall. Ooh, can I split with a wall outlet? And nice. Nice. Flipping, oh no. Um. to copy the power cable. There we go. I want to get to where it will not clip. Okay. And you are quick wire and quick wire. And then I should just be able to pull that around. It's funny that default makes a better loop than the straight mode. You'd think the straight mode would make it a nice 90 degree, 90 degree thing. But that works better. Oh, that's really satisfying. Satisfactory, you could say. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. We've now used blueprints to further our productivity. Ada should be proud. And then I need a storage container. I think that's enough space with dimensional depot on top. Um, it's not quite enough space. I could go one unit further over. Stuff comes out the other side. Whoops. That's why I was confused. Um, there we go. 
Technically, I could rebuild that to go the other direction and it'd be a little smaller. But I don't think I care that much. Okay, there we go. So now Quickwire is in the Dimensional Depot and I don't need to have it in my inventory anymore. Now, how much am I actually making? Nowhere near as much as I'm smelting. So this is not a very efficient build, but 120 a minute is more than enough for what I need right now. And I can split off of this to do other stuff in the future. Mainly this was a test of blueprinting, which is really cool. And look at how much vertical room we have. Like we have so much space to build uh, verticality into things. So that's pretty neat. I'm excited to see what all we can do with that. I'm sure we'll be able to make very dense, very dense builds. Um, but yeah, okay, we've got quick wired going. Um, so more power is done, Nobelisks are done, Quartz is still on the list of things I need to do. So maybe we should do that next. Hmm. Have we unlocked the smart wiring yet? Or is there still another still another tier we need to do for that? Uh, we have unlocked it, yeah. The only thing left is power towers and hyper tubes. Both of which require the encased industrial beams. Oh, motors is probably... So I need EIBs, motors, uh, what's it called? The framework. And smart wiring. Alright, so those are all the things we kind of need to work on automating. The smart... What's it called? Automated wiring. A wiring, not S wiring. Oh yeah, it's an absurd amount of cables. I remember now. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. So, <coughs> so it's, <coughs> excuse me, statters and cables. So two, 20 cables per wiring means I need 2,000 cables. That's not very many at all. Is that it? That's it. Okay. 2,000 cables and 100 statters. Yeah, that's not very many at all. Um... Yeah, and then the framework needs, we already said 1,200, um, what should I call it? 1,200 steel beams. So I think, I think I'm just going to set up uh, the assembler here. This is a summer sloop thing for sure. Because what we can do is I can full overclock. And it'll make 12 and a half a minute. And then I can double summer sloop and that'll make it uh, 25 a minute. And then that's only 40 minutes to get all of the framework. And I'll get, I'll only have to spend half as much on it resource wise. So the summer sloops are pretty handy make these uh, space elevator things a bit cheaper. And then I'm gonna remove that. That's gonna my way. I guess I'll need another summer sleep if I wanna do both. But yeah, there we go, 25 VFs a minute. Um, smart plating is all done, which is kinda nice. did not mean to parachute, but here we are. Oh, I'm down here. But don't do straight mode, do default mode. Yes, there we go. That's what we want. Okay. 
Beautiful. Okay, so then that'll be... I'm gonna put both on the same belt, because I'm definitely not making 200 and whatever a minute. That much, I am guaranteed. And then you're gonna be automated wiring. And I guess I'll just put one summer sloop in here. Okay. Now I just need four storage containers. Which, let's see if this is... Is that still lining it up wrong? It, it is not. That one's lined up correctly. Weird. It was not lining those up correctly uh, when I was in the quartz... Or the shatter rebar. Okay. Now, they are a little wider, so that doesn't work out, but that's fine. This is all temporary. Okay, so you're the wiring. Uh, so I only need 100 statters for this. And then... Some amount of cable. We said 2,000. That's easy. Up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I already have the staters as well. Right here. Happen to get those in a hard drive hunt. And then we'll see if we have enough steel beams. I need 600. Uh, that's a no. Hmm, unfortunate. I guess we're a little short on steel beams, because we're using all of them all the time. I'm pretty close to 600, though. But yeah, cables. Staters. Uh, you need 125 a minute, so... Pump up that belt speed. Connection. There we go. Alright, and then versatile framework. We need some modular frames. And then steel beams. And then steel beams need more steel. What's so what's going on with steel again? I'm not getting enough coal, is that the problem? Um Problem is, I think I have 60 iron and 60 coal. Why do I only have 60 coal coming in? What's the what's the idea here with coal? Isn't it a pure node? I think I need to make that a Mark II belt. Maybe it's just a normal node, and that's why I did it that way. But we can overclock now. And once I have encased industrial beams, we can go to Miner Mark II, which also doubles. I could even handcraft uh, some of those, which I will. That's pretty easy. I just need 10 of them. And then we can make a Miner Mark II. Yeah, I must have just not overclocked this. Those are conveyor mark. Did I just run out of uh, reinforced iron plates? Is that what happened? Yeah, because this is a pure node. Um, and so now, if we upgrade it, now we're getting 240. Well, I'm gonna upgrade to mark three where I can. Parachute. And we're just sliding here. 
All right, I'm not gonna have enough steel beams to uh, upgrade this whole thing. So now I will upgrade to Mark II for the rest of it. Mark two, lift mark two, bear mark two, and where's this iron coming from? Oh, I think I already put a mark two in that little wall. I remember doing that. I remember this now. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Get up here. And then I should just be able to uh, overclock these bad boys. These are impure nodes. So I'll just do some overclocking, that's fine. So there's a nice 120 a minute. At least it should be. Uh, but I need to upgrade the belts at the very top. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's a Mark II already. I don't have to worry about that. And I can't jump that high, so we gotta ride the ride the train. See, like right there, that was very janky. Just wanna go up. Just wanna go up. These? Alright, now these need to be marked. I'll just make them. Okay, and then the coal. That's looking very Mark 1 to me. Why is it looking very Mark 1? Or is that? Or is that Mark 2? Uh, yeah, that's Mark 2. Okay. It's just Mark III is more than twice as fast, so maybe that's why it looks a little a little off. But that should get almost all three of these running at full speed. And then that will get me a lot more of the steel beams. Okay. Still so expensive though. Four four ingots for one beam. So we're not gonna get beams that quickly. That'll help. I guess I could overclock. Ah! Well, uh, maybe I should overclock these two. It seems like a decent use of shards to go for 60 minute production. Uh, the Mark II belts won't be able to handle it, but the coal, I'm getting 270. The coal should be fine once I upgrade to Mark III belts. The iron, I'll need to overclock the miners even more and get a Mark III belt. So there's a lot of little, little steps. Um, This one's good to go still. We've already got 37 of our 100. And the versatile framework, we are doing just fine. I think I need more of the modular frames though. I put in 100, this is 200. I'll need, how much? Um. I would need 500, but basically I need 250 instead, because I'm doubling my output. And so instead of 1,200 of the steel beams, I only needed 600. So that's actually quite cheap. I just don't have enough. Okay, cool. 
Cool, cool, cool. Um, let me get the coal somewhere out of the way. I'll put it here, because you need it for, like, filters and stuff, so I'll have a little bit chillin'. I don't think I need that much Caterium chillin'. Um, let's just trash that. Is Caterium ore worth any points? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it is better than trashing. And then... A little extra concrete. What are we at? I'm at 13 coupons? Nice. Let me grab... In fact... We need a couple more aesthetic things for our coal power plant. Um, yeah, power outlet mark two. Want that. Though, I tend to not attach a ton of, you know what, no. I'm, for now, I'm not gonna do that. I tend to not need to attach a ton of stuff to a wall. Cause I kind of have it going along and then there's usually only one, um, uh, like connection out from the wall. Maybe two. I definitely, it's more the power poles that I want a lot of attachments. Clean pipeline? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Different finishes, that could be cool. Different foundations. Different wall materials. Steel wall could be pretty cool. I'm not making enough steel for it right now. Um, I do want inverted ramps because that um, kind of looks like a support. That's nice. But yeah, walls. I haven't automated silica yet, but those are pretty cool looking. I need the ramp wall bundle, and is there no ceilings? There, fix it, Ruth. Okay. Railing, structural frame, oh, those are cool. I like the frame foundations, but that's 10 coupons. So we won't be doing that. Oh, you can just buy packs of ammo, too. Pretty expensive, I'd say. But, you know, just in case. Uh, do I want stairs? Or corner ramps are five? No. Okay, we'll just go with that. No fix-it awesome shop transactions constitute transfer of ownership. All product rights and ownership remain with fix-it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you own me and my soul. I get it. I get it. Okay, do we need anything else? I think at this point we're good to go except for needing more steel. More steel beams here. I think that's it. I could go on a summer sloop hunt, but I don't really think that's necessary. Uh, do we have enough? Statters? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I didn't use the summer sloop on this, that's right, okay. Now I wonder how a summer sloop works because there's no productivity bar, which is how Factorio does the productivity thing. Um, so I'm actually curious how, how does it, like if I add a summer sloop halfway through making something, how does it determine, you see what I'm getting at? Like, When does it, when does it, how does it make 1.5 automated wiring? Does it make one and then make two the next time? Okay, it made one that time. Maybe that's how it works. Is it alternates? Yeah, that's how it works, okay. So it makes it at the same speed, 
it just alternates between one and two. Cool. Free stuff, baby. Alright. So, yeah, steel beams be the last thing we need for our versatile framework but yeah i think this is a good spot to end uh, the youtube episode we've made some good progress we got blueprints going and we're almost almost to phase well we're almost done with phase two so we're almost to phase three um we'll just need a bit more of that steel so as always for those of you watching in the future let me know what you guys think down in the comments below if you'd like to support me making these videos uh, i'm ever appreciative if you'd consider going over to patreon.com slash there are multiple uh rewards you can get such as accessing um, a unique discord channel where you can help me plan my series and different videos i'm gonna do we also uh there are different discord colors you can get uh, you can get your name in the name randomizer, which once uh, once I start building a little bit more of like a normal factory building, we can put these label signs up and I don't have quartz, so I also need that. But then we're going to start naming factory buildings after Patreon supporters as well. So, you know, there are fun little perks like that. Obviously, you can get your name in the credits, which you're about to see. Um, you know, but you, I want you guys to determine if it's uh, worth the value and something you want to spend your money on or not. You should be doing that with all the things you spend money on. So I wouldn't want to uh, pressure anybody to put money where it shouldn't go. So you guys know best, but I do appreciate you considering it. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'm having a ton of fun in this series, and I'm excited to see uh, kind of as we get into these further tiers what, what sorts of builds we can make. I'm already enjoying the aesthetic of my factory compared to my normal aesthetic and i think it's going pretty well so looking forward to the future thanks for watching see you guys next time